All right, so it's my uh, gr great pleasure to welcome you to yet another CTA seminar. Our speaker today is Giovanni Solder from uh, Leeds. We'll talk about joint work with uh, Marta Fiori Caronis and Paul Schaefer on the rival sense principles in the of the degrees. Right. Uh, thank you very much, Arno. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, so indeed, today I, mean, uh, I will talk about uh, rival sense principles in the VAR of degrees. And as Arno pointed out, uh, all of the results that you're going to see are joint work with Marta Fiori Caronis and Paul Schaefer. And you can all find them in our uh, paper on the archive. Right, so let's start with a bit of history. Um, so in the in 1980, uh, Rival and Sons proved the following uh, combinatorial theorem, uh, which are going to call uh, RSG, so Rival Sons for graphs. Uh, so let G uh, be a, uh, a graph, which uh, by graph we always mean, so for us a graph is a pair of V, a set of vertices, and E, a set of edges um, uh, of the graph. So let, let, G, uh, let G be an infinite countable graph. Then uh, there is an infinite set H with, uh, with these two nice properties. So for every point B in the uh, set of vertices of the graph, there are either zero, one, or infinitely many neighbors to that uh, point in our set H. And further, if we sort of restrict our attention to, uh, to, the, set A, uh, to the set H, so for every point that we pick in that set, there will be either zero or infinitely many neighbors to that point in the set H. Uh, the, the, I mean, this is the way that uh, Rival and Sons presented their theorem. So this can be thought as a an inside-outside Ramsey theorem in this sense. So we, with respect to Ramsey theorem for pairs, we gain some information uh, uh, in the sense that uh, now we also know something. I mean, the solution set also contains information about the rest of the points of the of the graph, but you have to pay that. So we have to to pay for this amount of information by giving up on some uh, on some knowledge of this set H. So we said uh, the, the, the set H will not in general be uh, an independent or a complete subgraph. Uh, we were able to prove that over a, uh, oh, I should also say the reason why we call this principle uh, uh, RSG is because they also proved a similar, I mean, a, a related theorem about posits. And that one we studied together with, uh, in, a, in a different, we're studying that in a different paper together with Alberto Marconi. Uh, about this one, uh, we were able to prove that uh, over RCA0, this uh, theorem is equivalent to, um, to ACA0. All uh, right. Now, let's try to sort of go back to uh, Ramsey theorem for pairs. So, one question that one may ask is, what if we give up on the information that we gain on the outside of the solution set H? So there are at least, well, two particularly obvious way to forget about this extra information. The first one, uh, can you see my cursor? Yep, yes, we can see it. Good, thanks. Okay, so the first one is to essentially forget about the second case of the theorem and to substitute this V with an H. And in this case, you get the, the following statement, which we, which we call weak rival sums for graphs, uh, which states the following. So uh, for every infinite graph G, there is an infinite set H such that for every point in this, uh, in this set, uh, that point has either zero, one, or infinitely many uh, neighbors in the set. The other quite obvious way to uh, forget about the outside part of the theorem is to simply forget about the first point of the statement. And in this case, we get uh, weak rival sums for graphs refined, which is a quite clearly stronger statement, uh, in which case we have that, so the statement is that for every graph G, for every infinite graph G, there is an infinite set H such that every point in that set has either zero or infinitely many uh, neighbors in, um, in that set, uh, in H. Right, and with the fundamental help of uh, Jeff Hurst and Stephen Lamp, we were able to prove that indeed one goes back to at least reverse mathematically to rival uh, to um, Ramsey theorem for pairs and to colors. So over RCA zero, uh, they are all equivalent. Ramsey theorem for pairs, WRSG, and WRSGR. Uh, right, and I guess this is essentially all the reverse math that we are going to see today. 
So the other main character that I have to introduce now is uh, well, bioreducibility and related concepts. I mean, I assume that we are all quite familiar with this, but I'll at least try to, to fix notation. So every principle P from now on will be seen as a partial multifunction from uh, the bare space to bare space. And we will describe it in terms of uh, its valid inputs and of the valid outputs to, to the inputs that we, that we feed it. Okay, so in this setting, uh, right, so I should also maybe say that by the nature of the principle that we are going to deal with, we can avoid introducing all the machinery of represented spaces. Uh, let's see, an easier way to do things. Right, so in this setting, we can say that uh, the principle P Varrock reduces to the principle Q. If there are Turing functionals uh, phi and psi such that uh, for every x in the in the domain of p, we can find a y that is a q solution to phi of x, such that psi of x and y is a p solution to our original to our original instance x of p, and maybe the picture makes it clearer. Right, another related concept uh, that we will also mention uh, is, is a sort of weaker uh, notion of reducibility, which is computable reducibility. So. Uh, we say that uh, uh, principle P computer reduces to principle Q. If for every X in the domain of P, we can find an X tilde uh, turn reducible to X and the Y tilde Q solution to X tilde, this new instance of Q, uh, such that uh, there is a Y, a, a, a P solution to X, which is computable in X plus Y tilde. And again, hopefully the picture makes it clearer. Uh, one final notion that we're going to mention is this stronger notion that is unsurprisingly called strong viral reducibility, which works as follows. So uh, P strongly viral reduces to Q. If there are Turing functionals essentially doing the same job uh, as in the viral reducibility, but this time you don't give Psi access to the original instance X. So Giovanni, may I interrupt you? Please. Uh, I see you're, you're quantifying on the solutions to Q on this Ys in a, in a way which is not the one I would expect. Sorry, what? Uh, in, you, you are saying that there is a Y such that. Uh, right, yeah, that's wrong. That, that for every Y, yeah, that, that's... Uh, so, so this is in all three definitions, right? Yes, 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 yes. Sorry, okay. that's a terrible copy-pasting on my part. Thanks, sorry, yeah. Um, Uh, right, then, yes, I should definitely take note of that before I upload the slides, if I ever do this. Mm. Right, apologies. Uh, right, and we should also, I will also introduce some more notation related to these uh, problems. Uh, so by P prime, we, we mean the jump of P. So. Now, the fact that they didn't use represented spaces means that they cannot give the, what is for me the standard definition of the jump. Uh, what I will say is that since most of the principles that we will be dealing with are cylinders, we can essentially safely think of the jump as a composition with, uh, of P with, uh, with the limb operator. So intuitively, what happens is that, so uh, the jump of P will be the problem having as instances uh, sequences that converge to an instance of P and the output will be the answer that P would be uh, would give to that uh, to that instance. Right, by P hat, I mean the parallelization of P. Um, so which corresponds to the intuitive idea of applying P uh, at the same time, infinitely many times to infinitely many instances uh, of P. And by P star Q, I mean the composition of P after Q, which intuitively corresponds to the idea of taking an, uh, taking an instance of Q, uh, getting a, an answer, a, 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 a Q solution to, to that, then applying possibly a computable transformation to it and feeding that uh, to, to P. And the answer of, I mean, so uh, what P star Q outputs is this um, final answer that P would give, essentially. Uh, right, yes, so now I notice that the order in which I presented thing might have been chosen more carefully. Anyway, uh, we say that P is a cylinder if uh, the 
problem given by the parallel product of the identity and P strongly Varrock reduces to P. And mm, well, one of the nice properties of uh, cylinders is that uh, Varrock reduction to a uh, to a cylinder implies a strong Varrock reduction to that, you know, to that, to that principle. Right. Uh, so yeah, and as I was saying, uh, almost every principle that we are going to uh, deal with today is a cylinder, although I will have to say something about it um, to be more precise. Right, so let's start with uh, one of the main results of the paper, uh, which is that RSG can be proven to be strongly Varrock equivalent to um, the double jump of Wiconix lemma. Uh, so this result has many consequences. Uh, just to list a few, uh, it follows from known properties of WKL and it jumps that RSG admits a universal instance. Um, so I recall what a universal instance is. So intuitively, it's a computable instance with maximally complicated solutions. And I hope I managed to write the correct quantifiers for this one at least. So uh, for a principle P, a universal instance is a computable input X star such that, uh, yes, yeah, so that for, uh, uh, for every uh, solution to this principle, where well, I'm missing an X here, I guess. Um, and every other computable instance X of P, we can find an answer to uh, a, P, a P solution to, to this X using uh, Y star. Right, and again, it follows from known properties of jumps of Wiconix lemma that we can fully characterize the degrees computing uh, RSG solutions to, um, to G. So namely, a Turing degree A computes an RSG solution to G if and only if A is PA relative to the double jump of, um, of G. Again, using results proved by Bratka and Rakotunyaina, I'm not sure about the pronunciation of this name, apologize if I'm butchering it, um, so it's a, it's a known fact that uh, the, um, the we, uh, Wiconix lemma double jump is Varrock equivalent to the parallelization of Ramsey theorem for pairs, which implies that RSG is also Varrock equivalent to uh, the parallelization of Ramsey theorem for pairs. And by the hypothesis of the I mean, of taking the parallelization, this means that RSG is parallelizable, meaning that uh, RSG is strongly Varrock equivalent to its own parallelization. And finally, again, using uh, known facts about uh, WKL double jump, we know that RSG is effectively, effectively sigma zero four measurable, but not effectively sigma zero three measurable. Okay. Um, and this is essentially all I want to say about RSG. Uh, and for the rest of the talk, I'll try to, well, uh, I'll try to analyze the strength the, the Virog degrees corresponding to WRSG and WRSGI. So I recall what these, um, what these principles are, but technically speaking, what we will be dealing with is the following formulation, right? So we, we want them to be partial multifunctions. Um, right, so for instance, WRSG is a multifunction taking as input uh, an infinite graph G given by uh, a set of uh, vertices and a set of edges, and as output, uh, an infinite set doing what we would expect. Now, what I want to say about this uh, is that, like, uh, these V matters, like, there, there are ways to uh, restrict, restrict these multifunctions, uh, which would imply that they are no longer cylinders. For instance, if we require that the set of vertices uh, is the whole set of the natural numbers, then that principle is no longer a, a cylinder. But we will not be we will not analyze that. So this principle, uh, this version of WRSG is essentially the cylindrification of the, the other one that I mentioned. And same goes for WRSGR. Right, so before introducing any other um, principle, the obvious question that one may ask is, are they in the same Virog degree or not? Uh, and the short answer is that we don't know. So we do know, what we do know is that, uh, well, quite clearly, WRSG strongly Varrock reduces to WRSGR. Uh, and this is obvious. I mean, simply because the instances are the same and every solution to WRSGR is a solution to WRSG. Uh, and we also know it's less obvious, but still quite easy to see that they are in the same computable degree. So that the uh, WRSG is computably equivalent to WRSGR. 
uh, but we still don't know if they are Varrock equivalent or strongly Varrock equivalent. Right, and this is essentially a summary of what I will do next. Um, so what I should say is that this diagram is essentially complete. Uh, what I mean by that is that the if there is an arrow, I mean, the, the only arrows that, um, I mean, if you don't see an arrow, it means that it is not there unless it's implied by transitivity, with the exception of possibly one arrow starting from WRSG and going to WRSGR because of what I said before. Uh, so I try to list some references uh, for like related to relative to papers that prove that an arrow was there or the an arrow was an arrow was missing. Uh, there are many more, and please for a check out our paper for a complete list of references uh, for that. Right. So uh, what we did in our paper was essentially so we proved only results about um, reductions involving WRSG or WRSGR, with maybe one exception. So. Uh, we weren't able to find anywhere in the literature a proof that Ramsey theorem for singletons does not reduce to uh, the ascending descending sequence principle. Uh, if you know of someone that should be given credit for that, uh, for that, please let us know. Anyway, I will say something about this in, in due course. Uh, right. So let's start with some computability theoretic uh, considerations. Uh, well, it's quite easy to see that if P is a problem such that uh, P um, is stri um, strictly omega reduces to Ramsey theorem for pairs, then there is no way that that P is computably above uh, WRSG. So the WRSG computably reduces to P. And this follows quite easily because uh, com computable reducibility implies omega reducibility. And I recall that by P omega reduces to Q, I mean that every omega model of RCA0 plus Q is a model of P. Uh, right. Uh, now let's go to a major point of difference between uh, Ramsey theorem for pairs and WRSG, WRSGR. So uh, it's true that for every infinite graph G, we can find a WRSGR solution H uh, that is computable in the jump of the instance G. And the proof is actually quite easy, and I should mention it because we will essentially use it afterwards. Uh, there are basically two cases. So let, let F be the set of vertices that have finitely many neighbors. The set is either finite or infinite. So if it is finite, then we're very happy because V minus F already is a solution because we are only left with points with infinitely many neighbors. And since this is a cofinite subset of, um, of V, it's clearly computable in G. If instead f is uh, is infinite, then we can define. Uh, I mean, f has a sigma zero two definition in G. So, by classical results, we can find an infinite delta zero two G uh, subset f zero of f. And at this point, it's easy to computably refine it as to. I mean, uh, and we can find a an infinite independent subset H of f zero in it. Easy. I mean, uh, if you're given a, a, a finite independent set, which is a subset of this F0, then in order to find the next point, you just have to wait until you run out of neighbors of these points that you have in your set, um, in your um, finite independent set. And so as a consequence, in particular, we have that uh, RT22 and WRSG and WRSGR do not collapse in the computable degrees. Um, Oh, um, right, now let's move on. Let's speak about something that uh, WRSG can do. And we will see that um, the cohesive principle strongly Varrock reduces to uh, weak rival sans for graphs. So in order to do that, um, we will actually prove another uh, reduction, namely that uh, CADS which is a principle that I'm about to introduce, Varrock reduces to WRSG. Um, and well, by CADS, I mean the following uh, principle. So as an input, we uh, CADS accepts infinite uh, linear orders L, an infinite linear order L, and an output is an infinite uh, stable linear order. Uh, what do I mean by that? So it's, a, it's an infinite uh, set, uh, an infinite set H subset of, uh, of L, 
such that every point either has finitely many predecessors according to L or infinitely many successors. Right. Um, so, right, uh, let's, let's start with this reduction. Uh, right, and I should also say after, uh, if we prove this um, Virac reduction, this will automatically be a, a strong Virac reduction because of what I said before, namely that WRSG, as we formalize it, is a cylinder. Right, so let GL, uh, and this is actually phi of L, I should, should have said. Uh, as, um, so we define this, uh, this graph GL as follows. So as a set of vertices, we use L, so the domain of the, uh, of the order that was the input of CADS. And we put an edge between two points of L. Essentially, if the order, if the way L orders them is the same way uh, that the usual order of the natural numbers orders them. Okay, uh, and we apply uh, WRSG to this uh, to this graph. Uh, now I'll describe how the return function of psi operates, and then I justify why it works. So uh, when we are given this h, we simply start enumerating it. Uh, we will do something different if we find an h zero. Uh, which has two neighbors. So what we do is essentially we enumerate H and we also check if the points that we are enumerating uh, have at least uh, have two neighbors, how many neighbors they have essentially. Okay, if we act, uh, if we if we find such an H0, so an H0 with two, two neighbors uh, in H, I should have said in H, uh, then we, I mean, uh, we only, we start enumerating just the points that are in H. Uh, sorry, that are neighbors of these, uh, uh, that are in H and that are neighbors of H0. Again, we do that until and if we find an H1 different from H0 with the same property, so with at least two neighbors. Uh, if this uh, other guy is found, uh, then what we do is we L increasingly enumerate points with at least two neighbors uh, in H. Um, right, and this is all that uh, Psi does. Right, so now let's justify why this construction works. So there are unsurprisingly three cases. So case one, if no, um, if H contains no point with two neighbors, then you are very lucky because this H is already a chain of type omega star. Because essentially, so the, the, the only case this is allowed is that some pair of points are, I mean, the order of some pair of points are flipped by, uh, by L, but you don't care about that. So the, uh, the order type of the chain uh, that you're given as an answer is omega star, right? Uh, if instead there is exactly one point H0, which uh, two points, well, that point is the only point with infinitely many neighbors because of the, the I mean, because of what it means to be a solution to, for, uh, for, um, for WRST. Right, so then our strategy predicts that we have to, we restrict to the neighbors of that point. And by the same by the same thing that I that I said for case one, uh, that set is a um, is an omega star chain. So by I mean by inspecting the, the the construction, what you actually did, you can conclude that in this case, so if there is just one point with infinitely many neighbors, uh, psi of h is a chain of type one plus omega star. Right. And the final case uh, is that there are two different points with at least two neighbors in h. Um, well, in this case, uh, it's quite easy to see that the set of points of H with infinitely many neighbors is infinite and it has no L maximum. Uh, well, because, so suppose that H0 is L below H1, then it means that H1 has infinitely many uh, points above it according to L. And after some, I mean, after some points, there will be an edge between every, I mean, between every every point of these large points and H zero as well. So all of these points will have two neighbors at least, which means that they have infinitely many. So at the same time, we can prove that uh, this nice set is both infinite and has no L maximum. So we can uh, run through it to produce uh, an omega chain. Uh, right. So you might have made. Uh, finitely many mistakes at the start of the construction, but you don't care. I mean, what you get is still a perfectly a, a solution to um, uh, uh, CADS. 
And actually, I should point out that this uh, can be, I mean, uh, this can also, this proof can also be seen as a proof that um, WRSG is computed, uh, that ADS computably reduces to WRSG because the solutions that we get are always something that it is, uh, that is either an omega uh, chain or an omega star chain, except for at most finitely many points. Right, and the final step was actually already done for us by Hirschfeld and Shore in their seminal paper, combinatorial principles weaker than RAM system for pairs. So what technically what they prove is that uh, over RC0 plus B sigma two, uh, the cohesive principle and, and CADS are, are equivalent, but by inspecting the proof one easily sees that they actually give two strong viral reductions. So that's done. Giovanni, why? Yes. Why, why in case two you get one plus omega star? You have to, you have to inspect. So you, uh, you end up noticing that the only exception point is the point that you, uh, the point with infinitely many uh, neighbors. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah, it's not obvious. Yeah, thank you for. Right, now let's move to uh, Ramsey theorem for singletons. Let me think slightly too quick, I guess. Mm. Might finish a bit early. Mm. Right, so there are several ways to formalize Ramsey theorem for singletons as a um, partial uh, multifunction. One sort of natural way to do that is the following. So as input, you accept functions from n to n with bounded range. And the output is uh, the, well, uh, an infinite uh, homogeneous set, an infinite type of homogeneous set of the natural numbers. Uh, another, um, Possible formulation is the following. So uh, CRT1n, which we'll call uh, CRT1n. So as input, we are still given uh, clearly a function from natural numbers to natural numbers with bounded range. But this time, the output is a single number, namely the, uh, I mean, the color of an infinite homogeneous set. Uh, these two principles are viral equivalent. Uh, I say that, uh, although not strongly viral equivalent. Right, so our uh, lemma is that the result is that uh, Ramsey theorem for singletons strongly Varrock reduces to WRSG, and the proof is quite easy. So, by um, what I said, by the uh, Varrock equivalence between CRT1n and RT1n, and by the fact that WRSG is still a cylinder, it suffices to prove that CRT1n Varrock reduces to um, uh, WRSG. So in this case, we use the following graph uh, as set of vertices. We still use uh, we use the natural numbers, and we put an edge between two points if and only if uh, they are given the same color by by f. So it's quite easy to imagine what what gf looks like. So it's a finite union of uh, complete graphs. So in particular, any um, uh, WRG solution H will contain one point with infinitely many neighbors, which for us means a solution, uh, well, a point with two neighbors. So in order to find the solution, we simply have to look for one point with two neighbors, which can be done pretty effectively and uniformly. And the output that we give is the color given by F to, to that point. So that's an easy result, but it has mm, some interesting consequences. Uh, for instance, it follows that WRSG and WRSGR are not parallelizable uh, because the parallelization of uh, RT1N but uh, Lim reduces to the parallelization, parallelization of RT1N. And also, it means that WRSG and WRSGR are not sigma zero to measurable, uh, again, because of known properties of RT1N. Uh, I should also point out, so at this point, we are left with two cases. Uh, we still don't know if WRSG and WRSGRN are sigma zero three measurable or not. They clearly are sigma zero, effectively sigma zero four measurable because RSG is. Uh, but we cannot be, I mean, we cannot be more precise than that yet. Uh, right. Right, and since we are talking about uh, Ramsey theorem for, for singletons, uh, as I was saying, uh, I want to say something about uh, our proof that um, Ramsey theorem for singletons does not um, Baroch reduce to ADS. So the way we proved that was by showing that already, R, uh, already RT15 cannot be reduced to, to ADS, uh, which leaves a couple of uh, natural questions to be asked. So what happens for RT13 
and RT14, considering that RT12 clearly um, virus reduces to um, ABS. So I'll give a sketch of a proof of how the reduction between uh, RT13 and ABS works, mainly because this can be done in pictures. And so I'll do that. Right, so again, since ABS, since the formalization that we use of ABS is a cylinder, it's enough to show that CRT13 Varrock reduces to ABS. Uh, so now I'll describe how the, the functional phi works. Um, yes, so uh, in this way. So we will be building a, um, uh, an ordering uh, in stages. So at every stage of the construction, we will have two, uh, like two colors that we like and one color that we don't like. So the two colors that we like are the ascending color and the descending color. Uh, and they correspond to the last two colors that were used in the coloring sheet, by the coloring sheet. And ideally, the, the order that we are trying to, to build uh, is as follows. So A is an, is an ascending chain at the bottom of the order. M will be some finite uh, middle segment of the ordering. And D is a descending chain put at the top of the, of the order. So OK, so, so suppose that the uh, stage 0, we check what C does on 0, and we find out that C colors 0 with red. Uh, then we immediately, we decide that the ascending color is red and we decide that accordingly uh, zero will go at the, at the start of this, of this, or of this uh, ascending chain. Right, next stage, we check what C does on one. Uh, we find out that the, the chosen color is blue. And since the descending color is still undefined, we can, we can decide that that one is blue. And similarly to what we did before, we put one at the top of that, uh, of the descending chain on top of our order. Right. Uh, now let's suppose that C uh, gives uh, I mean, colors two with, uh, with green. Well, at this point, uh, there's no, no room for red anymore. Uh, so we get rid of it and we decide that the new ascending color is green. Uh, so what happens is we sort of, we extend M to include what formerly was A. So uh, zero ends in the ends up in the middle segment of this um, of this coloring, well of this ordering, sorry. Uh, and we do to two what we what we did for zero. So we put it at the start of our ascending uh, of our ascending sequence. Right. So uh, suppose that three is colored blue. Then there's no need to update the ascending color and the or the descending color because the last two colors still remain the same. And so we proceed with the our construction of the descending chain. Uh, corresponding to color blue. Similarly, if four is colored green, there's no need to do anything special. So let's suppose now that five is colored red. So at this point, we don't like blue anymore. Um, so we extend M to include what used to be D. So point uh, one and three are now in M, of course, still uh, respecting the order. Red becomes the descending color and five uh, goes on the top of that, um, of that chain. Right, so it should be sufficiently clear how this construction works. Uh, so now let's apply ADS. So uh, let's H be an ADS solution to phi of C. Uh, uh, and let H0 be any point in this, uh, in this set. I claim that uh, the output C of H0 is an answer, uh, I mean, is a, is a valid answer to, is a valid solution to the instance C. Uh, why is this the case? Well, well, there are three cases to consider. So if C is such that the three colors are all used, I mean, all appear, uh, every one of them appears infinitely often, then every answer is a valid answer, um, according to for C theorem. Right, so instead, in case uh, C only uses two colors infinitely often, uh, then we actually reach the stage that I was presenting uh, you at the start. So the ordering that we end up with will indeed be something of type omega plus a finite segment uh, uh, plus an omega star on top. Why is that the case? Because at a certain point, we will stop updating what the ascending color is and what the descending color is, which means that M will stay, will stay the same forever, and we will just be adding points to A or to D. So any ADS solution to that will be entirely contained in either A or D, and points in, mm, points in A or D give rise to, to a valid solution. In the case that C only gives uh, one, only uses one color infinitely, infinitely often. Sorry, 
it's, I mean, it's even easier. So just one of A and D becomes infinite, right? So this works. Uh, as I was saying, a more convoluted, well, yeah, convoluted, rather convoluted construction shows that uh, you cannot do anything like this for RT15. So uh, RT15 does not var of reduces to ABS, which leaves us with a with an obvious open question. What happens for uh, Ramsey theorem for singletons and four colors? Do we have a reduction in that case or, or don't we? Uh, right. Now, again, let's move to things that WRSG cannot do. Um, we will, uh, as an example, we will see strong with, uh, st uh, stable ABC, uh, and I'll mention DNR. Right. So, in order to prove no reductions, uh, we will use the following technical lemma. Uh, so, let uh, again G be an instance of WRSGR, uh, and let and let's suppose that uh, there is no no easy solution to this. Uh, to this instance, by which I mean that there is no WSG solution H computable in the instance G. Then we already know one thing, which is the uh, point one of this of this lemma. G contains an infinite independent set. And this is what we proved back when I was talking about computability theory of WRSG. Because we know that uh, if there is no solution that is computable in G, then in particular the set F of points with just finitely many neighbors has to be infinite. And we saw that uh, you can always refine that set. Well, you can always find a, a delta zero two, um, an infinite delta zero two independent set yeah, inside that set. Another thing that I am not going to prove uh, is the following nice property. So, however, you start with an infinite, uh, with a finite independent set J that is a subset of your set of vertices V. And however, you pick a cofinite, uh, uh, a, co a cofinite subgraph of G. Then inside that uh, cofinite subgraph, you can find an, uh, an infinite H such that uh, the union of J and H is a WRSG solution to G. So I'm not saying anything about the shape of this solution. I'm not saying anything about the complexity, uh, but you can find such a solution. And this is clearly quite convenient when you want to diagonalize against things. All right, so as I was uh, anticipating, the theorem is that uh, SADC does not viral reduce to uh, WRSGR. And one can prove similarly that DNR does not viral reduce to WRSGR. So again, to be, to be clearer, uh, I say explicitly what these principles are for me. So SADC is the um, partial multivalued function accepting as input a stable infinite linear order L and as output uh, an infinite H such that um, let's say the, the, the suborder induced by L on, on H has type omega or, um, or omega star. So just a subset, not a, not a sequence. So this is the reason why I'm using a C here instead of an S. So SADS is strong, uh, well, uh, SADC is strongly var uh, reduced to uh, SADS, but not the other way around. Right. So suppose for a contradiction that uh, there is a reduction, so that SADC Barak reduces to WRSGR, and let's say that this is witnessed by functionals uh, Psi and, uh, and Phi. Then, so as a, as a linear order L, we, uh, we pick a stable linear ordering without computable uh, ascending or descending chains. So it's a, it's a classical result uh, that uh, such a stable linear ordering can be found. And I mean, of course, this also has the property that it also has no uh, computably enumerable uh, solutions to it. Right. Now, let uh, Psi of L, I mean, by our assumption of Psi, uh, Psi of L uh, will be an infinite graph, uh, which will not have computable solutions, of course, because this is the only thing that we are requiring of L. So if this graph had a computable solution, then Psi of uh, that computable solution would be a computable solution to L. Uh, which, which is a contradiction. So we can use point one of the previous technical lemma, uh, and we can find uh, a, um, an infinite independent set C inside of this graph, inside of Psi of L. Right, so select any point in the image of C according to, according to Psi, and by compactness, there, mm, there will be a finite segment of C 
making the functional converge on that X. Right. Uh, we then define the following uh, computably enumerable set, the following infinite uh, um, computably enumerable set. So let R be the set of points of L of our order, such that for some finite independent subset of F of the set of vertices uh, of our graph, um, the, uh, the set given by X and Y is a subset of Psi of F. So uh, this set is uh, clearly C and it's infinite essentially uh, because C gar guarantees us that there will be infinitely many such points. Uh, right, so since R uh, is C, it is Im impossible that, is, that it is completely contained in either the omega part of the, of the order L or the omega star part. So whichever one X was in, we can pick a, a Y in R, which is in the other part. So if X was in the omega part, there will be there will definitely be a Y belonging to R, which is in the in the omega star part of the ordering. And again, by compactness, there will be a finite set F witnessing the convergence of the of the functional psi uh, on these two points. But then, by the second uh, point of the technical lemma uh, that I mentioned before, uh, this finite F can be extended to a to a solution can be extended to a, uh, to a WRSG solution, uh, WRCR solution to, to our graph. And this is a contradiction because then we would have, uh, yes, because there's, uh, there is no uh, SADC solution uh, to, to our initial linear ordering that hits both the omega part and the omega star part, obviously. And as I was saying, uh, a similar proof works for the no reduction between DNR and WRSG. Right, the final thing that I want to uh, talk about is the uh, uh, stable Ramsey theorem for, for pairs. In order to do that, uh, and we will use LPO. Uh, right, so for me, LPO is the principle uh, accepting as input uh, a function from n to n, from natural numbers to natural numbers. And the output will be zero if zero is in the range of, um, of f and one otherwise. Right, and in this case, the result uh, is that stable Ramsey theorem for pairs, Varrock reduces to the, uh, the comp composition of LPO and WRSGR, whereas uh, the same doesn't seem to work for WRSG. So in uh, um, stable Ramsey theorem for pairs, Varrock reduces to the composition of the parallel, pr parallel product of uh, LPO with itself composed with WRSG. This is one of the very few cases in which WRSG and WRSGR appear to behave in a different way. Uh, right, I'll give a sketch of the proof of the first point because it's easy, easier. Uh, so uh, let F be a stable function from pairs of natural numbers to two. And let, G, uh, let us define the graph GF as follows. So the set of vertices will again be the set, uh, the set of natural numbers. And we put an edge between N and S, if and only if F of NS equals one. Right, uh, that's all we need. So let H be a WRSG solution to GF. And at this point we use LPO essential to determine uh, which one of the following two cases hold. So we either were already very lucky, meaning that H was an independent set, in which case LPO, uh, yeah, can tell us if uh, this is the case, and that there's nothing to do. So H is clearly an F homogeneous set uh, for color zero. If instead there are two points uh, that are neighbors to, to each other in H, uh, then again, LPO can tell us if this is the case, and we can computably refine H to yield an infinite homogeneous set of color one. Well, why is this the case? Because whenever one point has one neighbor, then it actually has infinitely many. Uh, which considering that our initial instance was a stable coloring means that that point is limit one. And you can repeat this argument for all of the points for, we, for all the points that are neighbors of this, uh, of this initial point that you found with a neighbor, uh, which in particular means that you can very easily find an infinite set of limit one points, which you can refine to a, to a solution. Uh, I should also point out that essentially, so 
if we put together what we saw, uh, it's easy to see that, that we essentially prove that uh, over RC0, uh, WRSG and WRSGR imply your RMC theorem for, uh, for pairs. Uh, if you want to sort of be more precise and quantify how many applications we used, uh, we have this color corollary here. So it seems that, so, I mean, it, it is true that Ramsey theorem for pairs strongly Varrock reduces to three consecutive applications of WRSG and WRSGR. We don't know if we can do better than this. Well, it was a bit faster than anticipated. Uh, this is a list of references uh, for the talk today, and I thank you for your attention. Thanks a lot, Giovanni. I think the timing is actually quite good because we've Thanks. got time for, for questions. Um, so do you sort of, do you have any sort of bounds on how big the gap bit between these two principles might be? Uh, not really. Uh, and and sort of maybe to to sort of follow up on that. Um, mm -hmm. sort of, if you are trying to sort of reduce uh, WRSG to WRS, uh, sorry, uh, yeah. WRSGR to WRSG plus as little as, as necessary, um, how promising would it seem to, to, to just apply WRSG on the very same instance and then try to sort of get rid of the problematic vertices without that causing problems. Do you, do you know that that fails or? Well, I know that I didn't manage to do it that way. So uh, yes, so, uh, this is something that we, that we tried, but it's very complicated to get, uh, to get rid of the, of the points with just one neighbors without ruining a lot of properties that the graph has. So yeah, it is a bit complicated to just use the same instance, so to speak. Any, any questions from the audience? I've, I've muted you so all. Sort of, sort of in the same vein, and what's your what's your feeling about uh, this RT14 thing, which seems also quite, quite uh, yeah, interesting so that you can prove RT13 already by an argument which is sort of a clever uh, and then you cannot get to RT15. So what's your feeling about RT14? So I think that there is no if reduction between RT14 and, um, and ADS, but it's just a feeling. So maybe we should have stopped the recording before I said that.